hi everyone welcome to yet another class on computing devices the last time we met our subject of discussion was early computing devices so that means is a continuation and at the same time an advancement over early computing devices someone may want to ask why do we need modern computing devices the answer is simple it means that the early devices could not meet up with changing times meaning they could not solve much of man's problem some of the devices they used then include stones fingers abacus to mention but a few to carry out computations but people no longer use these devices simply because they are not advanced and they are not user friendly when you take a walk around the town you you see all manner of devices used by people such as laptops smartphones in which some persons have more than one and then of course social media which most youth are involved in so the modern devices have found a way to unite our society into um, into one world so is not subject to racism or religion a simple comparison between the early man and the 21st century man paints the whole picture clear because with just a click of the finger the 21st century man can accomplish so much task and at a very fast rate okay it would be nice to look at it from this perspective how did the computers we are using get to this point well simple it began as a generation and then it kept on moving till where we are today so beginning from first generation down to the fifth where we are today computer has been evolving just like the human beings human beings given birth to and then he grows at that point he he will also give birth to another human being so that is how computers have emerged okay let's look at these generations in details one remarkable thing about the first generation is their size they were so large in size so big in size and because of their sizes the only way we can communicate with them is through machine language then we use things like punch cards to impute them and vacuum tubes were used to for processing so they use things like vacuum tube punch card machine language in case you're asking what is is magnetic tape what is punch card and all those things this magnetic tape then you have punch card they were all used in the fourth generation so big in size but they couldn't really do much so they were just big for nothing okay that will take us to the second generation of computers in the second generation of computer we saw a reduction in size they were smaller than smaller than those computers that existed in the first generation and then there was replacement of vacuum tubes with transistors which is more advanced and powerful high level language was also involved was used to replace the machine language so that means users can now interact with the computer very much and uh, easy okay the third generation so a drastic reduction in size and replacement of transistors with 
integrated circuit. So that means the computers are very powerful. One important feature is keyboard. So keyboard was introduced in the third generation, which makes a user to be in control. And of course, high level language was also used much. That takes us to the fourth generation of computers, which I believe is familiar to most of us. Some of the things that we introduced in the fourth generation include the microprocessor, which is the CPU that your computer uses, replaced integrated circuits, then RAM was also introduced here for storage, and then pointing devices were also used, like the mouse, so the user can perform calcul can perform activities on the computer without actually uh, involving the keyboard much. But that's not all, because the fifth generation offers so much about the power of computers. So what we're dealing with in the fifth generation is robots. Computers are programmed to behave like human beings, meaning they can do what human beings do. And someone is even saying much more. Well, that is debatable. Okay, so what is, where is all this thing leading us to? Well, the modern computing has united the world into a global village. That means within the comfort of your room or in the classroom, you could connect with anybody in the world. And there's this feeling of real-time interaction. It's as if the person you're communicating with, possibly through mobile phone or through a chat, is as if you are close to the person, right? So it's this feeling of interaction. And devices that are found in this in this uh, era are very, very interactive. Instead of using human beings for to fight war, what about e-learning? When the, that is called, so many activities could not happen in school, so e-learning became the old day. Even the news that our parents and our forefathers have used are used and now becoming digital. So that means everything is becoming computerized. What about the wristwatch? One of the days whereby it's just for telling us time, we can do that simple wristwatch and check your blood pressure, your body temperature. These are very, very... Before now, when you are traveling or you are moving, there is this problem of you have to ask someone about, about, or you just have to rely on one thing or the other to guide you. But we don't do that these days because with your small device in the world, there is real direction. So location of any place is no more a problem. What about this? When projects are handled before now, committees are put in place. They sit down, taking so much time analyzing projects, putting ideas together. But all this is becoming the thing of the past. Because in admissions, most of these tedious tasks are now assigned to robots that have the ability of behaving like a program that way and pick up a task which a human being can do and do it successfully. And the good thing is, at a limited time, and then gives you wonderful results. So robots are gradually uh, coming to the rescue of man to solve the challenges. They are employed in several places such as our airports, um, hospitals, malls, and so on and so forth. So being as it is, what should be our attitude as human beings in the 21st century whereby robots are being employed to work with humans? Very simple. Simply in other words, be into computers, don't be left behind. Learn what you can learn with respect to your profession or the now when you do that, you simply move at the peace of the world. Hope you have a nice time. Go and enjoy yourself. Thank you for listening.